Hello and welcome in this session of your course Pedagogy of Science that is BES 141. I am Dr. Gaurav Singh, your course instructor and today I am going to talk about a topic related to the theme material. As you all know that from upper primary to secondary level, the curriculum of science has been organized thematically and the topics in one theme are being distributed from class 6 to class 10 in a progressive manner. Similarly, for the theme material, there are many concepts which have been distributed from class 6 to class 10 and one such important concept is the concept of balancey and concept of mole which today I am going to discuss with you that how you will deal with this topic in your class when you are explaining or exposing your learners to these concepts. If you see that under the theme material, what are the main concepts which have been covered in the curriculum from class 6 to class 10, you will find that they are talking about matter, particle, state of matter, effect of temperature and pressure on the state of matter, which generally we are discussing at class 6 level. Then we are talking about the mixture, the type of mixtures, solution, colloidal solution, separation and purification techniques. Then from there we have moved towards the concept of element and compound atom, molecule, chemical formula, concept of mole and balancey. Then we have moved towards the types of chemical equation and reactions, then metal, non-metal, metallurgical processes. So all these important concepts have been distributed from class 6 to class 10 in a progressive manner. Suppose if you are teaching in a class 9th and you are dealing with the concept of mole or balancey, what do you expect from your learners? How can you engage your learners in these concepts? You need to know their understanding about the concept of atom and molecule. What is an atom? What are atomic particles? What is a molecule? What is the difference between atom and molecule? So to know about it, the traditional ways you can ask questions, but here you can give them a chart, a pictorial chart to identify the name, symbols and units of various elements. You can make a crossword puzzle which they can uh, solve or you can ask them to explain the story that how the unit of mass has moved from AMU to U, how earlier it was based on carbon, then it was based on oxygen, then it again uh, based on carbon 12. So the whole journey they can explain or they can narrate because they have already studied it in their previous classes. You can ask them to give examples of different molecules of elements and different compounds. So in this way you basically try to engage them in the concept which you are going to explain. Then when we talk about the concept of balancey for example, so first we should be very clear what balancey is. If you see theoretically Balancey is the combining power or capacity of an element. It basically helps us to know that how many atoms of an element will combine with the atom of another element or of the same element to form a chemical compound. So you can see that balancey of the atom is an, of an element can be thought of as hands or arms of the atom. How can you deal with it? I would suggest a very interesting activity for this. Can you use a role play technique here? You identify initial 10, 12 elements from the periodic table and you ask students to act as one element and when they are acting as one element means one student can be hydrogen, one student can be oxygen, one student can be carbon, one student can be boron, one student can be uh, sodium any 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 anything then when they act like an element you give them a task to understand that how many electrons are there with that element and if they are how they are distributed in different cells k l m and n so 
in this way they will be basically aware about the maximum number of electrons possible in their outmost cell we all know that if it is the first cell then the maximum possible electrons are 2 in another in other cases it is always 8 so now they know that maximum possibility is of 8 to be in a stable element and how many electron are there actually in their outermost orbit they also know so now you can ask them that what they will do to have their outermost most orbit completely filled each one of them so someone may say that okay i will lose one or two electron or three electron the other can say that i will take few electrons from other element uh, and uh, other atom now when they are saying this you can ask them further that what will be easy for them so suppose if an element is having uh, seven electrons in the outermost cell so what is easy for that atom whether to lose seven electrons or to get one electron definitely they will say that getting one is easier than leaving seven so when this discussion in different play and every uh, student will come forward and he or she will tell that I am this element I am having these much electrons and in out my outermost cell these much electrons are there I need to lose or I need to take this much number of electron to have my outermost orbit completely filled now one or two student of the class may be asked to note down their responses on the board and make it in a tabular form so how it will uh, looks like Suppose uh, the students are playing the role of hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon and sodium and so on. So how many electrons they have? Hydrogen have only one electron so it will be in K cell, helium has two, they will be in K cell, lithium has three, so two in K, one in L, beryllium has four, so two in K, one in L, similarly oxygen has eight, so two in K, six in L. Uh, sodium has 11 so 2 in K 8 in L 1 in M like this so in first round they will tell how many electrons they have in which cell now how many electrons they need to give or take because hydrogen has one so if hydrogen will get one it will have two and for K cell and for K cell the maximum number of electrons are possible two Similarly, helium already has two, so it is not required, it, neither it need to give nor it need to take. So, hydrogen either can give one or can take one. Lithium has three, so lithium can give one. Beryllium has four, so beryllium can give two. Boron has five, so boron can give three. Carbon has four, so either carbon can give four electrons or carbon can take four electrons. Similarly, nitrogen has 5. So, what nitrogen can do in the outermost cell? There are 5. So, nitrogen can take 3. Oxygen has 6 in the outermost cell. So, oxygen can take 2. Fluorine has 7 in the outermost cell. So, fluorine can take 1. Neon is having 8. So, neon do not require to give or take. Similarly, sodium has 1 again in the third cell so sodium can lose that so in this way they will write for each and every element that how many electrons they need to give or they need to take that number is basically the balancey of the element so balancey of the hydrogen is one balancey of the helium is zero balancey of the lithium is one balancey of the beryllium is two borons three carbon four oxygen two fluorine one neon zero and sodium one again so the electrons which are basically present in the outermost cell of an atom are called balance electrons and there is a very famous concept of Bohr-Burry principle. So when you talk about this then you can introduce the concept of Bohr-Burry which explains the distribution of electrons in different cell in the atom of any element. Here you also introduce the concept of inert element like the atoms which are having completely filled outermost shell they are showing very little or almost no chemical reactivity because their valency is zero and they are called inert elements 
so you can move towards the concept of inert element here with the explanation how can you evaluate this concept you give them an activity table where total number of electrons with different elements are given and they may be asked to fill the valency or you can give them some schematic uh, atomic structures like the Borbori principle based of different elements let them see the structure let them identify the element as well as its valency so many uh, tools or techniques you can use for the evaluation of this concept then let us talk about another concept called molecular mass so what is molecular mass molecular mass of a substance is the sum of atomic masses of all the atoms in a molecule of the substance it is basically uh, expressed in atomic mass units, units amu or called u in short so let us take the example of the water water has two hydrogen one oxygen so there are two hydrogen one unit hydrogen into two and what is oxygen oxygen has 16 unit weight so oxygen has 16 unit means total molecular mass of a molecule of water will be 2 into 1 plus 16 equal to 18 unit similarly nitric acid HNO3 1 unit hydrogen plus nitrogen is equivalent to 14 units so 14 unit nitrogen and oxygen is equivalent to 16 unit but there are 3 atoms so 16 is to 3 48 1 plus 14 plus 48 is equal to 63 units so the molecular mass of HNO3 will be 63 units so in this way you can ask your students to calculate the molecular mass of different molecules you give them an activity you give them an activity where they calculate the molecular mass of different molecules now let us see the example of the water again water when hydrogen combines with oxygen it makes water h2 h2 plus o2 equal to 2 h2 is the chemical formula h2 2 units of hydrogen because h is 1 unit o2 32 units of oxygen because o is 16 unit h2 o 2 plus 16 18 units right so h2o has 18 units now if you see to this equation either you can say that two molecules of hydrogen combines with one molecule of oxygen and make two molecules of water what the equation 2h2 plus o2 equal to 2h2o is reflecting or you can say that four unit of hydrogen with 32 unit of oxygen molecules combines and they make 36 units of water molecule so these are two different expressions the first expression is in terms of the number of molecules and the second expression is in terms of the molecular mass so which one is easier for you you will definitely say that first one will be easier for me as well as for my students so if it is so if it is so then here we introduce the concept of mole that the quantity of a substance can be characterized by its mass or the number of molecules but to make it easy we introduce a unit called mole symbol mol it is the si unit of the substance so what does one mole means one mole oxygen one mole carbon one mole hydrogen one mole water one mole hydrochloric acid one mole naoh anything can be of one mole one mole can be of atom one mole can be of ion one mole can be of a molecule so what does one mole means one mole means the exact number that is 6.0221407 into 10 to the power 23 or we in practice we write it 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 so this number is a fixed number and it is called Avogadro number, Avogadro constant and it is expressed in the unit called mole minus 1. So now what you can see in the table that when we talk about 1 mole of carbon atom we are basically talking about 6.022 into 
10 to the power 23 atoms of the carbon they will be in 1 gram of the carbon 1 mole of oxygen means 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 molecules of oxygen I am talking about O2 if you are talking about the ion 1 mole of sodium ion means 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 ions of the sodium so a mole is basically a chemist counting unit like when we call something in dozen one dozen banana means 12 banana so dozen has become a unit to measure the number of fruits one dozen banana two dozen banana three dozen banana we generally do not ask anyone to bring 36 banana or 24 banana or 48 banana we ask them to bring two dozen three dozen or four dozen banana so so dozen is a counting unit so you can see the if one dozen is 12 so one mole is 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 of that particular thing if it is atom then this number will be of atoms of the element if it is molecule then it will be number of the molecules if it is ion then it will be number of the ions so one mole is basically equal to 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 atoms ions or molecules or one mole is atomic mass or molecular mass so mass of one mole in grams of a substance is called molar mass how will you calculate it there is a very fixed formula for it number of atoms equal to given mass divided by molar mass into Avogadro number so what you can do you can give many exercises for the calculation of moles molecules of different compounds and their reactions or you can design puzzle also to explore the relationship between mass number atomic mass unit and mole so many activities are possible so what I want to say that when you are introducing the concept of mole concept of molecular mass what you require you require you require a lot of learners engagement in your class you require that they should engage in different activities you require that they should solve some numerical problems and you require that they should explore about new compounds new reactions new molecules you can give them a lot of exercises on this you can ask them to identify the elements which they observe in their surroundings and try to write the number of the atoms in that for example what will be one gram iron means how many atoms of the iron Fe will be there if it is one gram Fe if it is one gram copper how many elements will be there how many elements means the how many uh, atoms of copper will be there or how many molecules will be there so you can ask your students to write many such activities give many such questions and in this way <coughs> sorry repeat and in this way you can facilitate your learners in understanding the basic concept of moles molecules molecular mass and valency thank you very much